Hey guys, welcome to Kachi Bachi. I am Jordan, and today we are making face masks for hospital use. So we all know these are very trying times right now, and this is something productive and useful and helpful and positive and just to bring a little hope to our lives and the world. So these face masks, from my understanding, are what the CDC is recommending and requesting for use in hospitals. They're a single two layers of like quality quilting fabric or 100% cotton fabrics. Um, there's no nose bridge or anything like that because these go over existing face masks to extend their life and usability. This method makes 12 masks at a time using one yard of cotton fabrics. It's a very efficient and fast way to make these masks so that you can get them to your community and those in need as quickly as possible. In order to get started, you will need the following items. First, one yard of 100% cotton fabric. This is quilter's cotton. It has a tighter weave, so we can do just two layers and it's relatively safe there. If you're using a looser weave like Walmart or Joann's fabric, I would literally just double it so that it's less porous. It's gonna let fewer particles through. Um, quarter inch wide elastic. You need at least four and two thirds yards. If you cannot find this, you can use hairband elastic, you can use um, rolled cording, you just want to tie a knot in the ends before you get started. Um, or we will be doing a video to follow, which you can check in the link below that will have tutorials for using ties instead of elastic because elastic is very hard to come by these days. Um, a rotary cutter, this does increase your efficiency. You could draw lines and cut them with scissors. This is just going to expedite that process. A ruler, scissors, snips. I have glass headed pins because I will be ironing with my pins in and so those glass heads keep it from melting. You want a pressing surface, an iron, and then a sewing machine threaded with just a neutral color thread or a thread to match your project. Gather those tools and then we'll get going. Okay, let's get started cutting our face masks out. The first thing that I'm going to do is remove my selvage edge. From here, I will then subcut the length of my fabric into 14 inch strips. So the length of my fabric runs parallel to the selvage. Once I cut off my selvage, I will just measure 14 inches from that cut and then measure seven inches from the fold line and that will leave me with three 36 inch by 14 inch strips. Next, we will serge the long edge of each of these strips, so six edges, and you can use a three or four thread overlock along those edges. This just secures and prolongs the life of the face masks after and between washings. Then we will subcut each of these strips into nine inch wide sections. So I will just stack three strips on top of each other and then square off my edge. From that squared edge, I will now cut nine inches from that edge and continue to make that cut along the length of my fabric. This leaves me with 12 9 by 14 inch rectangles. We will now move to our pressing station and I'm going to press each of these in half lengthwise and so they will be right sides together and then they will measure 9 by 7 inches. From your quarter inch elastic, cut yourself two seven inch strips for each mask. An easy way to accomplish this is to measure and cut one seven inch strip and then use that strip lining it up at the end and then cutting at the opposing end. From here, I will place my elastic on the short end of my rectangle, approximately a half inch from each top and bottom. You want to make sure that you don't twist the elastic as you're pinning it. You want a nice smooth curve there. So you'll pin at the top and then pin at the bottom on both sides. And we're pinning all 
three layers together. So it will be fabric, elastic, fabric. You'll repeat this process on the other side. Now we will head to our sewing machine and we're going to sew around the perimeter of our rectangle and we want to leave an approximately two inch opening on the bottom of our mask. This is where we will turn it right side out. While doing this, I'm going to back stitch when I start and back stitch when I stop. We're gonna head back to our pressing station and I'm gonna clip the corners on all of my face masks and then pull the right side of my fabric out through the opening that we left on the bottom and turn all of my masks right side out. So now we will press. You want to pull the seam as far out as possible so you don't end up with excess fabric taken in those seam allowances. We're gonna press it along the whole perimeter of our face mask. That opening, you just wanna make sure that you press that edge under. That's going to be seamed closed when we top stitch around our mask here shortly. After pressing the perimeter of our mask, we're gonna press it in half just to create a crease. And then we're gonna press it into quarters. So I will fold my bottom to that center line and then fold my top to the center line. I'm gonna press on either side as opposed to pressing over the top of the whole thing. That way I don't press out my center line. Once I've pressed it, we're now going to fold. So you can just approximate this or you can measure if that makes you happy. I will fold at one of my creases here, creating a roughly half inch pleat and then pin it. I will then fold at the next crease and I will make that line up so that it's at the bottom of my first pleat. You don't wanna be sewing over two pleats simultaneously. And then we pin. And lastly, I will fold at my third crease, making my last pleat on this side and pin. You'll then repeat that process on the other side and iron it to set those pleats. And just a reminder here, you wanna use glass head pins when you're working with an iron so that you don't melt your pin head to your project. For the final step, we're gonna head back to our sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch all the way around the perimeter of our face mask, back stitching when we start and stop. This is gonna seal that opening where we turned it closed and it will also hold our pleats in place. All right guys, so that is making your pressing masks in an assembly line. You'll definitely have a more effective use of your time if you complete all of one step with all 12 masks and then move to the next process. That's gonna be the most efficient way to get the most of these turned out into your community. Thank you so much for joining us here today, guys. We are so appreciative of this community that has such a desire to help and to generate as many masks as they possibly can for all of our friends and family and coworkers and just our nation in need right now. So share this video with anyone that you know who can sew and let's make some masks. We would also really love for you to like this video, subscribe to our channel. That way we can share more content like this with you. We'll be producing and putting out some more videos here very shortly on different versions of masks for home use and for like nursing homes and such like that to help keep our immunocompromised friends and family safe. So definitely check back here shortly. We're gonna have those out any day now. And we so thank you for joining us today. So subscribe, stay safe, and sew.